Hi folks, welcome to the ultimate guide, how to thread mill and how to set that up in Fusion 360. Let's dive right in and show you the answer and some of the myths and mysteries that we had to bust through to get this working reliably. And then we're gonna rewind. We're gonna talk about what is thread milling, why should you think about thread milling, lots more tips and tricks and lots more details, trying to tie everything back to the machinery's handbook to get rid of that noise that comes in from all these calculators and mystery bits of information. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So what is thread milling? It's a way to cut threads. Instead of with a tap though, we would drill a hole and then we come in with a tool looks like this in fusion or this in real life and it does a helical interpolation we usually start at the bottom and work our way up it's going to come all the way to the bottom of our part plunging through air right now and then start to spiral up at the pitch of the thread cutting or machining that thread into your part to create a thread milling operation 2d thread we pick our thread mill we pick our bore, and then we've got two values under the passes tab, thread pitch. Luckily, that's pretty easy. In this case, a quarter by 20, 20 TPI means the thread pitch is one divided by 20, or 0 0.05. What the heck is pitch diameter offset? Lots of ways to explain it, and we're gonna come back to this in a lot of detail, but basically it's the difference between the major and the minor. For the folks here that are familiar with quarter 20s, a lot of times your major would be 0 0.25, that's a quarter inch. Your minor would be what we're drilling, number seven drill, 0 0.201, which means your pitch diameter offset is 0 0.049. We got frustrated using thread milling because that never worked. If you put a pitch diameter offset of 0 0.049, we found it generally means after you thread mill that hole, your screw will not fit. Usually it's too tight. Here's why. Thread mills don't come to a sharp point. They have some flat spot on them. What is the dimension of that flat spot? That's what we're gonna come and talk about later in this video. But what we've gotta do is we've gotta push the tool diameter or the pitch diameter offset further out, assuming that that tip was actually perfectly sharp, and then bring it back to adjust for what that flat spot actually is. And the reason that this is a problem is that thread mills are great because they can cut lots of different thread pitches or TPIs, but for every thread pitch, you've got a different diameter of flat spot. So even if you've got a really high quality thread mill, that flat is going to require a different amount of adjustment for each thread pitch. For those of you that don't care, I don't blame you. We've made this simple. We've got an internal simple and we've got an external simple. So internal would be for internal holes like this part right here. We're gonna enter in our major diameter, the 0 0.25, 0 0.201 minor, What's the diameter of our thread mill? That is always published on the box of the thread mill. Really important to keep that. Thread mill is not worth that much if you don't know its specific cutting diameter. Then the thread mill flat or the crest. I gotta give a shout out to AB Tools. They're one of the many thread mills that we've used in testing for this video and lots of people make great thread mills. AB Tools is the only one so far that we found that actually publishes that crest or flat spot dimension. And once you've got that, you're good to go. We can make these adjustments. And this Excel sheet, free to download on the NYC CNC website, makes that adjustment for you. So in this case, let's say we were using this TM one quarter, which is a 0.188 cut diameter and a three thou crest, 0.188 cut diameter, 0 0.003 crest. That is our pitch diameter offset. We'll drill this out with a number seven drill, 190 surface feet per minute, 3,000 per rev. And on our threading operation passes, we've got that pitch diameter offset of 0 0.0536. We're taking seven passes of 4,000 each. We'll show you how to calculate that in a minute. And we're doing repeat passes. Uh, I like to call that a spring pass. That's another major component to successful thread milling is understanding or taking into account tool deflection. But what I love about this is we're running this right here. First try, we're not chasing our tail and the screw will fit. Now you can adjust that fit. You can have a tighter fit, you can have a looser fit. And that's one of the things that's nice about thread mills. But a lot of times I just want it to fit the first time and not have to chase it. 
Next up, 5 16 18. We're drilling out with a letter F that's 0.257 inches in diameter, 200 surface feet per minute, six thousandths of an inch feed per revolution. And then we're coming in with our thread mill. Again, thread pitch will be one divided by 18. The PDO, pitch diameter offset, we grabbed from our thread mill sheet. The major diameter is plus 5 sixteenths. The minor is the 0.257 that we're drilling. I'm using the detailed sheet here, so we'll put in, instead of putting the min and the max, we'll just put in the same for each. 0.24 inch thread mill that has a 0.0015 crest, and that gives me my pitch diameter of 0.064. And again, fresh off the machine, let's give it a shot. We have a nice fit. Awesome. Next up, 3 8 16, same process of getting through. And here we're actually using the same thread mill to calculate our pitch diameter offset. We'll say it's a 3 8 inch major. We're doing a 5 16 pre-drill. And same tool, so it should be 0.0724. Let me go back to my fusion here. And there we go, perfect. Quick test fit, it fits, and we did not chase this. We did not try this off camera and adjust those values. We're getting this on the first try, which is awesome. And finally, half 13 thread, same process, stepping up to a larger thread mill to accommodate that larger thread depth works great. We do have a little bit of a backside burr here and that will stop us from threading all the way through. Let's take the part off. We're gonna deburrow that with a rotary tool. Link here to our page on the different deburring tools that we use. You're going to have to get rid of the backside and front side burr. Now we could have done that in the machine, both on the face, but also card here to our video when we did some backside chamfering, which you can do with a dedicated tool or you can even use a thread mill. But once we get that off there, just a great fit. And there's just something that's really satisfying when you have a thread that fits snugly, but is free turning. In the Excel sheet, we've got the internal simple, which is really easy if you're just gonna drill a hole and you just wanna know the PDO or pitch diameter offset. We've also got internal detail, and this is really cool. We spent a few months building this sheet out, and it's these adjustments that I wanna explain so that you understand what's going on. So the hash marked area here is our screw or our thread and the purple is our thread mill. When you calculate a PDO, it assumes that the thread mill comes to a sharp point, which the thread mill actually does not come to a sharp point. So you can see what happened is we've got a band on the left and right side, and that's the actual part of thread milling that we care about. It's a little bit different. A lot of times when we machine a part, I care about the axial or the floor or the radial or the sidewall. Here we care about this kind of angled interface and fit. So we break this adjustment down into three stages. The first adjustment is just our pitch diameter offset. So again, that's our major diameter minus the minor diameter. And what I like is we're pulling that straight from the machinery's handbook, but I want to get rid of all of these intermediary sources. I want to go straight to a reliable, trustworthy book source, major diameter 0.25. And we actually have a, a range of minors of 0.196 to 0.207. The average of those happens to be about 0.201. And most of us are drilling in this case, and that's what we're drilling. And a number seven drill is going to give us that 0.201. So we've got the 0.049, which is the difference of those two. So our second adjustment assumes that thread mill flutes come to a sharp point. So what we're doing is we're increasing the pitch diameter offset. So we're making this tool move in a larger interpolation diameter to account for the fact that it has a sharper point. So it's actually gonna be cutting material beyond what we would really prefer, but that's how you have to use a thread mill. What's important in this adjustment to calculation is that the bottom and the top of the thread mill profile now correctly represent the profile of the thread that we're trying to cut. In other words, that gap is gone. So you can see that in adjustment number two adds, in this case, 9.8 thousandths of an inch. And the sum of those two would be 0 0.0588. So if we look at our toolpath, this would be just adjusting for our pitch diameter offset. 
0.049. Adjustment 2 pushes that toolpath out a lot further, as you can see there. It's a wider toolpath, assuming that the tool came to a sharp point, 0.0588. Then what we do in the step 3 is we account for what the actual flat tip is of our thread mill. In this case, we've got the published dimension from AB Tools of 3000s, so that pulls that toolpath back in by this amount, adjustment 3, which is 5.2 thousandths of an inch, resulting in the 536 PDO. From 1 to 2, it pushes it out, and then from 2 to 3, it pushes it slightly back in. And an optical comparator is an awesome tool to see this. It's also a useful tool to get a rough measurement of what that flat spot is. Unfortunately, not everybody has one, but you can see here, if we look at this thread mill, it doesn't come to a completely sharp point. It has some amount of flat spot to it. Likewise, if we take a look at this half by 13 tap, you can see that tap, which is kind of like a form thread tool. If you think about it, what we're doing with a tap, we're cutting that thread at a prescribed shape or profile in a rotating motion. Yes, we could make those adjustments in one adjustment instead of breaking out into the three levels, but I think it really helps understand and visualize what's going on. And that's gonna make you a better machinist and help you understand how to handle these situations. And in the detail worksheet, we've got a lot more information. For example, you can input the min and max from Machinery's Handbook. We've got the page references cited here. That's really helpful. For example, we're gonna be doing a Wednesday widget soon on cutting a Pearson pallet system, and we've gotta cut a one and 15 16th inch by 20 thread. Bit different than usual, and it's helpful to be able to pull in those min and max minor diameters. If you input the neck diameter of your thread tool, we've also built a calculator into this Excel to confirm you're not going to rub. And we've got some explanations, for example, explaining all those adjustments if you wanna reread them again on your own to process this. It's pretty cool stuff. And once you understand it, once it clicked, I was so happy because I realized this is why we were struggling with thread milling. We generally are using the minor PDO adjustment, and that's assuming that your CAD file has a .201 dimension, like we've got right here, this hole, was modeled at 0.201 diameter or your minor diameter. If you have a CAD file that was modeled off of the major, we've got that adjustment for you as well. In other words, if this hole were, instead of being 0.201, was 0.250. Let's come back to that height or sharp point that's missing on most thread mills. We took the tools that we use for this video and we added them in here along with the flat length that we either pulled from the manufacturer looked at on our optical comparator or just found out through trial and error of actually thread milling. And we found something interesting, and this is very much a rule of thumb, it's not a perfect recipe, but for your smaller thread mills, you know, those that are up to half inch or so in diameter, we found that the flat length was generally a bit less than one one hundredth of the cutting diameter. So for example, a quarter inch thread mill might have something like two or three thousandths of an approximate or estimated flat length. Again, that's just a rule of thumb to get started. Some thread mills may actually come to a perfectly sharp point, uh, and some may differ uh, from our chart, but a good way to help get you started on that. And speaking of that, so what are thread mills? Why do we use it? Where do you get them from? Thread mills are great for a variety of reasons. It lets us adjust the tolerance. Again, what kind of fit do you want in your thread? Some people want a loose or sloppy fit. Sometimes you might want more room for a thread locker or some other material. Sometimes you want a really snug, tight fit. Hard materials, thread mills allow you to cut the thread in progressive passes. That could be really important if you're dealing with something that's a hard material. Likewise, it's actually really rare to find a true carbide tap. They exist, but most taps, even the high-end taps, are high-speed steel or a powdered metal of some sorts, whereas carbide thread mills are quite regular, quite common. One of the best reasons that's often cited, and we agree, is what happens when it breaks. If you break a tap off in a part, it's usually a pretty frustrating endeavor, and it may even mean you've got to take it to an EDM shop or have somebody, quote-unquote, burn it out, which is usually expensive, disruptive, uh, or takes quite a bit of time. If you break a thread mill off in a part, it is frustrating because they're not cheap, but it won't get stuck in your part, and oftentimes it won't even damage your part. You can cut lots of odd thread sizes with thread mills, as we just went through here, and as we just showed, there are limitations based on the thread profile of the tool itself. In other words, I can't use this really tiny thread mill here to cut a three-quarter by 16 thread 
but there is a pretty good amount of versatility between thread sizes, especially when you're cutting external threads where the actual diameter of the tool doesn't affect your ability to get inside the hole. As you saw in our Wednesday widget a few weeks ago, you can actually back chamfer with thread mills, which can be quite handy. And thread mills can help you really get close to a shoulder or at the bottom of a blind hole. This Fusion 360 sample file is also available on the NYC CNC website. It's got samples for quarter 20, 5 8 16, 3 8 16, and half 13. You could literally either right click and copy these and move them into your own Fusion project, or you could store them as a template and apply them, and that's a great way once you've got a recipe down for thread milling. The tool library in this file is also properly done and labeled. We've got the thread mills modeled as form tools that properly reflects the shank and clearance, and we've got links in for the product description and product ID. Again, we like this AB Tools one. It came with actually the Pearson kit that we bought to make our own Pearson palette. We've used this Lakeshore tool for a long time, especially when we're cutting half 13 threads. And that's a great example as well where you can use a thread mill is it doesn't require the same increase in torque. To tap large diameter holes is, requires huge amount of horsepower or torque from your machine. Also increases the risk of breaking or damaging it or better work holding. Whereas thread milling, you're making a chip. It's just like an end mill. And that's how you should think of it when it comes to feeds and speeds. I would run this with the same speeds and feeds as I would a point 388 inch end mill with four flutes. Harvey Tool or Helical is another reputable vendor that has a lot of different sizes and options in stock. And then Tormach actually is great because of the price. Tormach has some of the least expensive thread mills that we found out there, and that's great. They're actually a great quality tool, but I would say if you're just trying to get started or you're trying to inventory a couple of thread mills to have when the requirement comes up, absolutely consider picking up some of these. And finally, you've got multi-flute thread mills. So the advantage here is a couple of things. Number one, you're cutting with multiple teeth within the same pass. So you're able to complete a thread mill operation with one or two rotations of the part. So it's much faster. It's also going to be a stiffer tool because you've got a much bigger shank or core of that tool. It's not going to be as subjected to deflection as, say, this tool is. They are unfortunately pitch specific. So in this case, this is a 13 pitch thread mill. So you're only going to cut, it says half inch by 13, but you could really cut uh, within some range anything that has 13 TPI with this style of tool. So much less versatile than your traditional single flute or single tooth thread mill that can cut any 60 degree thread profile, inch or metric. One last thing, we were using regular bolts and regular fasteners to test our thread mills. So that's okay if you're the end customer or that's what you're using. However, it's worth throwing out that if you're a job shop or a machine shop or doing work for other customers, consider picking up th threaded plug gauges. They're not cheap, but take a look at our Tico video. You see how screws are made. They're made with a roll form machine. It's a really cool process, but it's not a substitute for checking with a more standardized method like a plug gauge, which is actually going to tell you if your thread milled or tapped hole is within spec. These are about as idiot proof as it gets because it's called a go, no go gauge. One side should thread in, that means you're good to go, and the other side should not thread in, and that tells you you're within the correct range. Folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. Check back to the NYC CNC website and link in the video description will have the page with all this information in the latest version of the Excel file as we make changes and improvements to it as well. Again, take care folks, see you next Wednesday. <laughs>